Council, I would like to see. I'll, I'll make this final statement, and that is, we have a lot of work to do under some real extreme conditions. I, I do not have the appetite to deal with this and be progressive and continue to work and then get diverted by a sand trap that might put us into legal trouble. So if it was my, and I'm going to agree with you what you're saying in terms of supporting our corporate counsel, the things that are going to get us into legal binds and slow us down and distract the resources from like being progressive are things that I would want to try to avoid at this point and again continue to explore other opportunities and call our other partners uh, to the table who have an investment in our community. We've had, we've had concerns. We've had concerns as a body about that before, especially as, uh, on whether or not uh, the direct cash benefits or even this program would have would uh, result in a tax obligation. And then we went out and got uh, outside legal opinion on that, and we're still waiting on on the two, two remaining. But the one said it would, and so I, I caution us to, to to try to frame this in a way of those who disagree with our council not trust, trusting him, but people get things wrong all the time. And that's why I think we consult with outside legal counsel from time to time to get other opinions. And so what I'm saying is somebody that has taken a lot of, every time counsel comes, any of our staff write something, I read it, all of it. And so what I'm saying is very surgically that I have not seen anything that suggests that we would lose in court. We might open it up to more people that have standing, fine, but we won't lose in court by doing it. And I have not seen or heard anything today that suggests otherwise. So that doesn't mean I don't support our corporation counsel. I talk to Nick all the time. <laughs> Being the, he would probably even agree. And I appreciate you picking up the photo week is and times I probably shouldn't be calling him. When he's on vacation, me and Nick have a great relationship. That being said, there's room for disagreement. That's what we're here to do. I, I'm sorry if you feel defensive. What I'm asking is how do we, if what he's saying is not satisfactory, do we? Do you want him to get another report? Do you want to do more research? How do we move beyond that? Because he's made his position. Yes. yes so right. then give that direction well, so we can get that. Part of, you know, this is a democracy. This is a committee. He is an advisor. I have questions based on his advice to see, to get a deeper understanding of both clarity for myself as someone who spends <coughs> hours and hours and hours doing legal research on tons of issues, has a fairly deep understanding for someone who is not a lawyer of the law, and I have some questions for our corporation counsel about this determination. And when we say, we talk about things like mandatory spending, and we're so concerned about that, but we can't name a single mandatory spending item that is mandated. We're not even mandated to have a police force. Our, our police force is funded if I can have a question, Kyle, yeah, really. Just with all due respect, all uh, Councilman Reed, I think this committee meeting may, is not the place to have all your questions answered. I think that in the spirit of time and the spirit of what this committee is for, that we do need to stay focused and that there I'm is trying, another... I'm sorry to interrupt, and but I'm, I'm, no, I'm, 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 I'm trying to be laser focused. Hold on, hold on. I'm trying to be laser focused. No, I know. I, I, I know. So, I'm just saying that, you know, there is another way to do that. And I don't know that this time at this committee meeting at 1030 is the time to do it. Well, we have three minutes left. Please <laughs> go ahead. Please give it all to council members. Yeah. Yes. Three minutes. All right. Thank you. Uh, so we, we don't know. We can't name any specific items that are mandatory spending. Okay. So and my research shows that we don't even, our police department isn't mandatory spending. Uh, many of the services that we provide are not mandatory or mandated by any state law. Um, you are required to fund them once you establish them. So if the city council votes to disband the law department, yes, you don't have to pay for it. Right. So it's not mandatory. But of right. course, once we create something, we have to, we have to fund it. That's we're going to give them the service to the community. Right. But we can we can get rid of that service, or we can change the level of service. We can make any kind of adjustments. So it's not mandatory spending from our general fund. I can't look at anything in our general fund and say that it is mandated by state law that we provide that service that's spent from the general fund. If you can point to something uh, that is, I'm happy to hear it. Um, two, uh, you mentioned uh, in your, your memo, you mentioned the concern about uh, <coughs> the, uh, you know, uh, transportation tax. You mentioned the, the, the county lawsuit, the lawsuit against Cook County. Can you just very quickly describe that lawsuit was about what? The county was trying to use a, a tax that's meant to, for transportation to basically go into its general fund. 
and the Illinois Supreme Court said that the, both the county and local municipalities, uh, including home rule ones like Evanston, cannot use use tax dollars that are meant for can I, can I get transportation. Can, why is that? I, the reason why is Article 9, Section 11 of the Illinois Constitution that says transportation funds can only be used on, or transportation taxes, fees, and fines can only be used for transportation costs. So that is a very narrow, very specific ruling that has nothing to do with what we're talking about here because we're not looking to use the motor fuel tax for reparations. We're not using, so it's Article 9, Section 11, transportation funds. So I, I'm curious, uh, again, so that I'm going further into it, um, going further into it, I'm, I'm curious what, uh, there, there, you mentioned taxpayer standing. Um, so what are the cases that dictate taxpayer standing? Um, let's see, Marshall versus County of Cook, 2016, Bill at first, 142864, uh, talks about the first district case from 2016. Barber versus City of Springfield, 406 LF 3rd, 1099, Fourth District case in 2011. It talks about taxpayer standing in state. I'm sure you want to look it up and read it. That's why I gave you the citations. Um, so what I have here is, you know, the, the first case uh, that said, I'm going to respectfully ask this. All right. Well, I, 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 you well, I mean, you know, we could have this debate offline, but that's what I would publicly encourage. you would like to have a debate between two black men in the reparations committee. Yeah, because we're trying to get this right so we make sure that people who are in the community are getting the funds. We have people who are 70, 80 years old who are waiting for funds, and we are being delayed because of misinformation. We are perfectly legally able to transfer money from the general fund to the reparations fund. Gentlemen, they do it. And General Block will represent us to defend the law. We'll have a good law firm representing us as well. Thank you. So, just in an interest of time, and I can always appreciate the passion um, and discourse around this subject. Uh, Corporation Council, Nick, I want to thank you very much for your presence. I know that you had a 10-15 meeting. To the members of the public, I want to thank you all again for, for coming out and being a part of this conversation. Seeing no additional items in front of us, uh, this meeting stands adjourned. Thank you.